episode of the Skip Meetings Podcast, a podcast for curious professionals embracing the future of business events. My name is Miguel Lamps, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Skip Meetings, and in this episode titled Discovering America's First Resort Destination, I have the pleasure of speaking with Kelly Cavers, Chief Sales Officer at Discover the Palm Beaches. In the episode, we talk about the long history of hospitality that the Palm Beaches has. We talk about what genuine hospitality is and why that's important. We talk about welcoming environments where everyone is made feel welcome and why the Palm Beaches is focusing on this. We talk about connecting DEI initiatives with meeting attendees. And we talk about the importance of what happens between the sessions and how planners can use destinations to really help attendees connect. I hope you enjoy listening to this conversation and don't forget to check out the other episodes of the Skip Meetings podcast. Now for a word from our sponsors, PHL Life Sciences, a division of the Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau. Host your convention or trade show in Philadelphia, one of America's leading life sciences hubs. PHL Life Sciences, the first and only CVB division of its kind, will connect you to the professionals at the forefront of your industry and to a culture you can only find in Philadelphia. A city known for its rich history that's forging a bright future, Philadelphia challenges the expected and defies convention. A world of discovery is waiting. Visit phllife.com to learn more. Hello, welcome to this episode of the Skip Meetings podcast. I'm your host, Miguel Nevsh, the editor-in-chief of Skip Meetings. And today I am delighted to have Kelly Cavers with us, the chief sales officer of the Palm Beaches. Kelly, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Kelly, um, would love to start with saying thank you for sponsoring the podcast. The Palm Beaches is our sponsor this month, but I also would love to then jump on a little bit of an intro, if you don't mind, if you could talk us through kind of your your experience in the meetings and events industry. And I'd love to start, if you don't mind, where you first connected with the industry. I think this is an industry that's sort of slightly hidden to many people and that are not involved. And I'd love to understand kind of when you first realized there was this industry and then take us through your kind of journey. Sure. Um, Well, I've always had a love and a passion for travel growing up. Um, My parents definitely wanted us to see the world growing up. And so um, I was a finance major and coming out of college, there was an opportunity to get uh, work for United Airlines in their management training program. And so I thought that was the best position or job ever because I could travel the world with the benefits. Um, But during that time when I was able to experience different divisions of uh, the airlines, I fell really into a division of meetings and events events. And so I worked with United Airlines for 10 years, really enjoyed that opportunity. And working in the meeting and convention convention market, I started working with convention and visitors bureaus at the time. That's what they were called. And when it was time to make a change from United that I felt that had been there for 10 years and I was ready for something different, I leaned into the partners and friends that I had made in the DMO world, convention and visitors bureau world, and went to go work for the San Diego Tourism Authority, which just opened my eyes to destination marketing and uh, spent several years there really enjoying that beautiful destination and city and then went back to my hometown of Chicago and started working for Choose Chicago. And um, when I was working for Chew Chicago after a handful of years, um, my husband was commuting back and forth from Boca Raton to Chicago, which is not an easy commute by any stretch. And uh, there was a position that was opened here in the Palm Beaches. And so I took advantage of that opportunity and also wanted a change for the family because we had young children at the time and really wanted the opportunity for our children to run and play outside almost, you know, 365 days of the year. And so um, I moved down here to the Palm Beaches and started as uh, senior vice president of group sales. And after eight years, I am now the chief sales officer and I oversee both 
both leisure sales and group sales and destination servicing in our visitor information center. So Excellent. that's where I am today. Okay. Well, thank you for taking us through that. For, for anybody who's maybe international is not familiar with the geography in the region, can you explain where the Palm Beaches are and what they are? Because it's not as simple necessarily as, as kind of one city or one town, right? Yeah, no, absolutely not. Um, so we are a collection of cities and towns. We are in South East Florida, um, very close to Fort Lauderdale and Miami. Um, in some areas, people could even, you know, consider it. I think if you go onto Wikipedia, it says it might even be like a suburb of Miami, mm -hmm. which it is not. It is a very large county. It's um, larger than some states. It's, it's larger than the state of Delaware. It's the largest county east of the Mississippi. And as I said, it was 39 cities and towns. It starts as far south as Boca Raton, which but butts up against uh, Fort Lauderdale. And as you move your way up, uh, some of the major cities that we do represent, Delray, Boynton, West Palm Beach is our centrally located. You go up to Palm Beach Gardens and then Jupiter. So we're 47 miles of coastline and beautiful on down here in Southeast Florida. Love it. Well, uh, sounds lovely. And like you said, uh, if the children can play outside almost all year round. That's definitely part of the appeal. So wanted to get your take on, on why uh, you like the meetings industry so much. I assume you've, you've spent a lot of time focusing on the meetings and events industry. So why do you think that the meetings industry is, is special in your view? Um, I would say the sense of community camaraderie and support that you receive with everyone that is in the meeting and convention industry. I think many people take the approach of rising tides, raise all boats. So, you know, when I first came in, I was, I was really surprised, especially in the destination marketing arena where you could call your counterpart and they would help support you if you had a question or a, a current challenge or opportunity. And so I really feel it's a very supportive industry. Um, and when you go to meetings and events, whether it's for business or personal, you always walk away inspired and, you know, really wanting to take things to that next level or that next step. So I'm really intrigued by the inspiration and support you receive from others. I think that that is absolutely wonderful. Um, so at the Palm Beaches, you talk about genuine hospitality. Can you define what that really means? Because it feels like that's quite connected with with what you're talking about the beatings industry. Yeah, absolutely. So when I first came down here and you know, candidly memorized what is our brand promise, what is our mission, and it is part of it is where genuine hospitality is a way of life. And then when you come down here and you live and you breathe this, you realize and you go back to the history of where we were founded as America's first resort destination. It started with this beautiful, iconic property known as the Breakers that is located on the town of Palm Beach here in the central part of Palm Beach County. And you realize is, this is how this, this destination really even started with as America's first resort destination. And everyone that worked here really embraced that customer service, that genuine hospitality of welcoming everyone. And it really spread throughout the county with, you know, other properties that were built, such as the Boca Raton and things of that nature. So genuine hospitality is a way of life for everyone that lives here, because we're always welcoming individuals to the destination. Excellent. And um, these resorts, I mean, um, welcoming hospitality is part of the resort uh, nature of resorts, right? So how does that work in the meetings industry? You're, you're welcoming groups. How do you how do you give how do you provide that sense of, of kind of um, 
genuine hospitality to, to larger groups or to things that might be more logistics focused, et cetera. So when we talk about welcoming groups or welcoming conventions, events to the destination, um, we really lean into th- this the destination itself so you know i said that you know we are comprised of 39 cities and towns and when you think about that each city or town is is different in and of itself and so we really lean in and embrace the difference between what Boca Raton is compared to Delray, compared to West Palm Beach, compared to Jupiter. And we really lean in and embrace those those different uh, communities, those different characteristics. And so when a group, a meeting or event comes in, we're really fortunate because we can offer these different diverse areas to welcome events and welcome attendees. And so there's really a lot of choices that our destination has to offer. The other choice, whether it's not just the properties and the, and the cities and towns that we have, but it's the location of where we're at um, that makes it very easy when you were talking about the logistics of a group or event coming in to for individuals to access the destination because of where we're located. So we're fortunate because we have a beautiful airport, Palm Beach International Airport that uh, services our county. But because we're so close to Fort Lauderdale in Miami, and as I said earlier, some, you know, if you go into Wikipedia, they define it as a, a, a suburb of those areas, which we're not. But the beauty is we have access to those airports also, right? So we have the access of Miami and Fort Lauderdale that make it very convenient to utilize those airports. Mm -hmm. We also have, which is in in three days, um, is going to launch an extension to the Brightline high-speed rail that we have here. So... Brightline has been servicing Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Boca, West Palm, and now in three days is going to extend to Orlando. So there's a lot of different ways of how you can access our destination that makes it really easy and logistically um, favorable to many convention organizers. That sounds great. It sounds like you can get the best of both worlds there. You can have a, a small meeting feeling with lots of different opportunities, but you have the logistical, at least transport capacity of a much larger destination. Is And, you know, we represent, and a lot of people don't realize, over 200 hotels, mm-hmm. um, well over 17,000 hotel rooms. So we have a beautiful convention center located uh, in West Palm Beach to an iconic over a thousand room um, hotel with the Boca Raton to, you know, unique boutique properties like the White Elephant or the Colony in Palm Beach County. So we have the diversity of properties also. So whether you have a larger meeting or a smaller meeting, we really meet the needs of all. Okay, great. So I want to talk a little bit about welcoming environments, because I think this is something that you've been focusing on. So it's not just having the logistical capacity, the rooms, etc., but also kind of catering to different people with different needs. Tell us a little bit about that, how that came about, and and how does it how does it work? Yeah, um, kind of going back to what I said a little bit earlier is 39 distinct cities and towns and that is comprised of different races, ethnicities. Um, and so we really lean into those various communities and that allow us to welcome all. And we've embraced our community because of what those community partners have to offer that make it very easy to make it accessible for all. Um, A few years ago, we started with um, the Arts and Tourism Summit on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that was really to help educate our community 
and embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion. And in doing so, we realize that we have a lot of tools and resources right here in our community where we can support one another. That makes it very easy for our community to help a conference organizer and an attendee to feel welcome, to make it very easily accessible for all. And so, you know, we've leaned into that. We've leaned into our community leaders, partners, organizations to elevate the between the sessions experience. And that is part of our brand of what we like to say here in the Palm Beaches is that we elevate that between the sessions experience in a meeting or a convention to make it easier for the conference organizer and attendee. And we do that by activating our community to support that. Are you ready to celebrate your successes in the world of meetings and events? The Skift Meetings Awards are back for 2024, recognizing the most innovative business events companies across 15 categories, and we want you to be a part of it. Winners will feature on Skift Meetings, sending a clear signal to events professionals around the world that these are partners they can rely on. The final deadline for submissions is June 11th. We encourage you to start your submission today to secure the best entry rates. For more information and to start your submission, head to live.skift.com. Can you give us some examples of activating the community? I always find it's really fascinating to explore, you know, how you can bring groups of travelers and, and, and uh, events, et cetera, but how you connect them with the local community. Yeah. So I'm just going to give, you know, one example of when we first started and wanted to make sure everyone, um, felt welcome, you know, there is a segment of, uh, people that are on the spectrum. And we wanted to say it's not necessarily something you see immediately um, of how you could support someone, whether it's an attendee or a conference organizer. And so we activated the community first by just leaning into an organization that's based here. It was founded by a professional golfer by the name of Ernie Ells. Um, and his son is on the spectrum and he started the Ells Center for Autism. Here And we leaned in and did a tour of the, the Ellis Center for Autism because it actually is a phenomenal venue for events that you could utilize it for an event. Why is it a, it is a school? We reached out to the executive director to help understand that audience and what they do in that school to make everyone feel welcome and to be so successful with those students that go there. And so she taught us and many people in the community of what we could do to make it very comforting for people that are on the spectrum, whether it's having a sensory lounge at a meeting or event and how you can incorporate that. So if an attendee needs to kind of step aside during a networking event to feel more comfortable, they can. Whether it's the dietary requirements and needs for someone that, you know, is, this is very critical that makes them feel more comfortable um, to just training of the staff and the sounds, whether it's, you know, the light that comes in and things of that nature. So she helped educate in uh, our community to support that. And then we brought it into our meeting venues and things of that nature. And not only did we bring what we learned for the Out Center for Autism, we also work with them and bringing them in to volunteer or to work meetings and events where you can really activate the community and they've come in, whether it's guiding people to the right rooms or registration to, you know, filling bags and things that needed to be done to execute on the meeting or event. So that's just one example of what we've done here in the Palm Beaches. And, and a great example. I like that connecting the certain community with with the travelers, with the with the event attendees. I think that that's really valid. And of course, it's it's now integrated into the venues, which is great to hear. Now, I know it's part of your kind of uh, marketing campaign is this idea of between the sessions. Uh, and I think that's about doing activities, but also understanding how the range of activities you have at your uh, location, at your at your destination, 
you know, kind of connects meetings and makes them better. Tell us a little bit about how that came about and how that works in practice. Yeah, it actually came about through a customer advisory board. Um, and we really leaned into what our customers saw when they were having a meeting or event here. And to always say what what separates us from other destinations. And they said it was really how we elevate those moments that happen outside of the content that a conference organizer is going to bring in. And then it even came into like, actually, you can help elevate the content. So when we talk about the between the sessions experience, it's not just when the meeting's done and, you know, the attendees have time to go out and explore things on their own. It really happens in all parts of the event. And so it came in to say, wow, how can you help us, you know, elevate the between the sessions? And maybe it was we could bring a keynote thought leader into the meeting itself. Maybe it was when you went outside for a break and it it wasn't just the coffee that you had. It was from a local roaster, Oceana Coffee, that came in that really gave you a sense of, of place because maybe this is something that you haven't tasted anywhere else. To the evening activity of, of going to the National Croquet Center because there is not you know, a national croquet somewhere, somewhere else. It's only here in the Palm Beaches. And so really what we did is we leveraged what our customers were saying, that what we were about. And we also um, leveraged our overarching brand, which is the original, the one, the only. And that really started with the foundation of being America's first resort destination. They are the original, the one, the only. And then looking at these between the sessions experiences to say, wow, we're really the original, the one, the only that have these certain things that maybe other destinations don't. And we leaned into it and utilized it as part of not just our brand, but into our activities and our sales tools and how we can give that to the customer. Interesting. So it sounds like the between the sessions is not just the leisure activities, but actually the connecting the dots and making people connect over, uh, I guess, leisure activities or, or kind of leisurable things. Um, but what makes kind of the Palm Beaches unique for, for those between the session moments? Um, I think, you know, kind of going back to the original, the one, the only. So I mentioned, you know, we have the National Croquet Center, um, which is, you can't find that anywhere else. We're also known in many different areas as Florida's cultural capital, over 200 cultural institutions, which many people probably do not know or realize. We're Florida's golf capital, 160 golf courses. Um, or world or the world's equestrian center. And so it's these really unique experiences that attract people from Argentina to come up to experience. It attracts professional professionals of all kinds. I would lead into the professional athlete. Many professional athletes call the Palm Beaches home. Why? Because of the landscape that we have that allows them to practice their craft. Um, you know, we are uh, known as the Wall Street of the South um, because of the industry that we have here in the financial and insurance um, where many people that you've seen, you know, that used to be up in the Northeast are now moving down here. Um, you know, we have one of a kind experiences, not just in the leisure side, but, you know, the, the professional and business side, as I mentioned, the Wall Street of the South, but we also have Max Planck and Scripps, and that's in the life science, you know, this the world renowned, the ranked run number one in research in life science. And so it really attracts a very high level professionals that want to come down here and experience those 
activities, those venues, those uh, community players that live down here. We're hearing a lot from our audience, you know, the current challenges uh, in the industry with kind of wanting to do more with less and being under a lot of pressure. Um, I just wanted to get your take on what you're hearing from your customers and how are you able to work with them to be able to help them in these, you know, trends that are happening today with them being, I think, busier than ever before and being under more stress. How are you helping them manage that as a destination and kind of attracting them to the Palm Beaches? Um, so I think there's a couple of things. I think we always want to sell on um and support the value of what's being offered, right? Is I think sometimes when a conference organizer is looking at something, they're looking at certain line items, like is there is there a rental cost? You know, what is the cost of the hotel? What is the cost of the transportation and things of that nature? And and we want to make sure they truly understand the value of what they're receiving that is offered. Um, that makes it really, if you look at then your bottom line budget of how you really can stay within that bottom line budget. The other thing that we, you know, support is um, with a team, you know, we have a sales team and a convention services team. So our sales team leans into how can we elevate that between the sessions experience and provide what we would call like the value proposition of what's being offered that makes sense to that conference organizer. So I'm just going to give an example is that they're trying to stay, a conference organizers trying to stay within budget, they need transportation and and they're trying to figure out how to make this whole package work. And our sales team is going to lean into that and understand, okay, well, you're looking for transportation. You're trying to stay within budget. So why don't we provide these electric cars that will help provide the transportation for your attendee to and from the venues that you're working with. Um, but then that electrical transportation has branding opportunities around it that we're going to also offer so that you can sell it to your sponsors to make revenue in that fashion. So not only do we help raise revenue for the meeting and the event and provide those assets complimentary. We're providing the transportation needs for the attendees in a very sustainable fashion. So it's really all encompassing. We w then move it. So the sales team member might sell it like that, but then when they hand it over to our services team, they're constantly working with that conference organizer day to day to learn what are those needs because the salesperson might've worked with them three years ago and those needs change now as the meeting's coming up and they're going to work with them hand in hand to say, how can I bring this community in? to support your needs that will allow you to stay within budget and exceed all expectations. So that's really how we set it up here in the Palm Beaches. Good to hear. I think a lot of planners will will like hearing those words of, of connecting between the sales team and, and the kind of organizing team. I think that's really, really important. So also wanted to get your, your view on any trends that you're spotting. I'm sure you're seeing different groups coming into the Palm Beaches and using the destination in different ways. Where, at Skiff Meetings, we're always looking at new trends and new ways of doing business or new ways of doing meetings. And I wondered if you had any insights on what's changing, particularly in this sort of like post-COVID reality. Are venues being used in different ways? Is there more attention to certain features or certain things within the destination? Yeah. Um, you know, I think when it comes to a meeting or event, um, you know, we always talk about, you know, they want the experience. They really want the experience. They, you know, they're making memories for something and it's going to be more than just an experience. It's going to be more than just a memory. It's going to be something that's incredibly meaningful, both on the business side and on the personal side. So that brings in that leisure component, right? Is that you we're seeing more of those opportunities where someone wants to come in and extend their stay because they're going to bring 
you know, the family in a little bit before or stay a little bit after, but they really want that meaningful impact. Um, And so we're really activating the community that when they come in for that meeting or event, that meaningful impact can happen in many different ways. And that's, it's really into that wellness component, right? And the wellness is mind, body, spirit, and environment. And so we bring community partners in to help embrace those components, whether it's a mindful moment in the beginning of a meeting or event that allows maybe it's a meditation um, that comes in from a local community leader to bringing an organization like Four Oceans. Four Oceans is locally based here in um, Boca Raton. Um, the product that they they create, they really first started with bracelets. So for every pound of plastic that the fishermen would pull out of the ocean instead of fish, Four Oceans pays them for that pound of plastic that they pull out. And they then they sell the products that they pull from the plastic, whether they're bracelets now to shirts, to uh, cups and, and things of that nature. And so we pull for four oceans into many things, whether it's to help with an ocean cleanup, whether it's to um, sell some of their merchandise that, you know, helps clean our oceans to a beach cleanup, to an incentive experience where instead of, you know, going out to the ocean and, and going, you know, scuba diving or something like that, they can go out on one of their boats and actually help clean the plastics out, which become much more meaningful than just an experience. That sounds like fun rather than buying a bracelet. As, as exciting as that sounds, actually going out on the boat sounds way more, way more experiential. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of want to end on getting your vision for the future of the industry. You've talked about lots of really interesting initiatives and trends and different things that are happening, but are there any kind of key points that you see coming up ahead for the industry that you'd like to see the industry embrace or that you'd like to see planners kind of more focused on that are part of a kind of a bigger vision? Um, you know, I think it's kind of leaning into a bit of what I said is, um, the impact that a meeting or event may have and it's more than just on that individual you know that it's going to be on that individual it's the the meaningful impact that that individual has and continues to have when they leave a destination or when they leave and go back to their you know day-to-day um life but you realize the impact it has on a destination, the community, the the small businesses that um, are inspired by that. So as a conference organizer wants to see, you know, businesses are engaged in businesses that, you know, are sustainable, that are innovative in the way that they're doing something. I really feel that it, it it forces our local businesses to make sure that they're thinking in that direction and they're innovating in, you know, a new way of how they do business. Um, we have a, a product here and um, it's a, these, these sun shirts, they're called, it's Mang. So, you know, they're swim shirts, they're uh, sunscreen shirts, whether, you know, you're golfing or you're, you're out at the beach or something like that. But for every shirt that you purchase, a mangrove is built. And this really, this organization, this company that's based here came from the demand of what conference organizers were asking for. They said, okay, I see this demand and I'm going to, and I'm going to fulfill it with the organization that we've created here. And so I think it's things like that as conference organizers look and demand certain ways of doing business and inspires the innovation of the local businesses here to do better. I love it. I think that's a great vision. And I think that's something all events can kind of focus on. So it's really universal. So wanted to end by getting your recommendation on someone else that we should have on the podcast. Perhaps we can continue the conversation about legacy or inclusivity, but wanted to uh, get your recommendation. 
Yeah. So the recommendation I'm going to give, she does not know I'm mentioning her name right now. Um, so, uh, but she is phenomenal and really inspired our team um, to think of things differently and to truly understand the audience that we're talking to from a sales perspective. And that is the executive director for the L Center for Autism here in Palm Beach County. And her name is Marlene Sotelo. Um, you know, why she leads that organization, she really inspired our team to think differently um, because it's it's the audience that she deals with every day. And um, when when one in 10 are diagnosed that are on the spectrum, you realize there's a there's a large percentage of people coming in that we need to make sure we're meeting their needs. And so I would recommend her. Great recommendation. We'll, we'll be in touch to make that happen. Kelly, appreciate you being on the podcast with us today. Thank you for your time and, and sharing your insight. And I wish you lots of success with the Palm Beaches. And thank you again for, for being a sponsor. Well, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. 